Hey guys, this is Fady from Harvey Productions and welcome to another video. In today's video we'll be talking about hardware inserts with Logic and the Antelope interface. I'm using the Galaxy in here but this applies to any interface and today's video we'll be walking through how to set up hardware inserts inside Logic and using that feature. If you don't understand what that feature is, it's a really cool feature that allows you to use any of your hardware units in the studio and literally treats it as a plugin inside your setup and that allows you to tap into your hardware setup that you have in mixing which we call a hybrid mixing and at this point I am using some of my plugins and some of my hardware inserts which is my actual rack units and mix and match between them. Um, it's really cool because it allows you to utilize all of your gear to its fullest potential as well as obviously you're using analog gear for mixing whether it's on an individual instrument or on, on a mix bus and um, it just expands your potential of your studio. So in today's video, we'll be walking through how to route that and how to set that up in Logic and how to make it work. So let's just jump in right away. So the first thing you wanna make sure, this is the console for the Galaxy, uh, but it would be similar whether you're using Galaxy or we're using Orion or um, any of the Antelope setup. I personally, my personal preference, and I've done this long enough to uh, like to simplify stuff so that way I don't have to be chasing my tail figuring out what channel went to where. So I always like to do one-to-one -one when it comes to hardware inserts so that way I don't get confused about uh, what channel went to where. So uh, a practical example, if I, for example, want to use my Poltec EQ right here as a hardware insert, I have 32 channels on the back of my Galaxy inputs and 32 outputs. I would choose one of those. So let's say I chose channel number 17. So I'll go 17 out from the Galaxy into input of the Pultec EQ and then comes out of the Pultec EQ into 17 in on the Galaxy. I try to keep it at the same number so that way it's not confusing. Same applies to any uh, hardware unit, whether I have a Fusion, for example, SSL Fusion right there, which that would be a stereo. For example, it would be channel three and four in, three and four out. Uh, in this scenario, I have already four channels uh, selected, which is channel 13, 14, 15, and 16 on the back of my interface. So these are the ones I'll be working with and I will explain how to set it up. So here on the console, here's my line inputs are channel 13, 14, 15, and 16. And here's my line outputs, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I labeled all of them P, which is my patch bay. Um, so basically I'll take all four of my channel line inputs and I would drag those and I would assign those down to my DAW inputs. So because these inputs will go to my DAW on the same channels and then same, I will choose my DAW outputs, which is 13, 14, 15, 16 and I will assign those to my line outputs, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, basically, the, the trip happens, starts in your software, in your DAW, which will be DAW output, 13, 14, 15, 16. They'll go, then they'll go to the line output of your Galaxy or any antelope. They'll go to some hardware unit. They will come back into a line input. That line input goes into DAW input, and that's how the trip happens. As long as you have this set up properly right there in the console, then it should be really a simple process in Logic. Also, Logic is very, I don't normally mix in Logic, I'm a Pro Tools guy, so I always mix some Pro Tools. But when it comes to hardware inserts, Logic is significantly superior than Pro Tools when it comes to hardware inserts, and I'm gonna explain here why in just a second. All right, so now that we set this part up, now, We've got a Logic, I have a simple session here with just a piano track in it. Now I want to process that piano track. So you will go basically down here at the very bottom where you got your, so I'm gonna just start a clean one, nothing. So this is where you add your audio effects. And at this point, your hardware insert, this is a stereo one, so we're gonna be using a stereo insert. Um, I will add normal effects. So you can just add, for example, just add an EQ. So this is, here, here you go, just a normal EQ that we added. Now, after that, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and add the hardware insert. I'm gonna go here and then you go to IO. 
and it's it's called IO. It doesn't call. I don't know why they have it that name, but anyways, input output maybe that's what kind of makes sense. So I'll go here. It's a stereo. So I added a stereo IO, and then here is what the IO looks like. Let me turn that EQ off. Right there, and this determines where the audio go and where the audio come back. So in this case, I know that my, uh, so I have my API here and I know that it's connected in channel 13 and 14 input and outputs on my Galaxy unit. So I'm gonna choose here output and I'm gonna go channel 13 and 14. And the way I know this is, is the way I set it up here. So it's 13 and 14 right here is where my API is connected. So output comes 13, 14, input comes back into same one, 13 and 14. Now that I set this up, and I'll walk through all the settings here real quick in just a second. If I press play, I, I already see the signal on my API. So that signal is actually going from Logic to the API and it comes back to Logic. And that is I'm using a real analog unit as a compressor on that piano right now. And you can easily bypass it. So here is You can tell the difference when I turn it on and off. All right, now these features right here, which makes Logic superior. One of the first advantage in Logic is being able to trim inputs and outputs. Pro Tools doesn't have that. It's just really cool. If I'm hitting the compressor too hard or I want not enough, I, you can adjust input and output trim. It's a digital trim before it hits the unit or after it comes back from the unit. You can have different inputs than outputs. Pro Tools doesn't like that. It goes one-to-one -one only. But I still, even with that, I still keep them one-to-one -one, so that way it's not confusing because it gets very, very confusing. I like to keep it just clean like this. Um, there's latency detection, which tells you how much latency you're having, which you can see here, it's saying there's 19 samples and then it's already offsetting that for you. So it takes care of that. Um, which Pro Tools does, Take care of the delay compensation as well. Right there is a, a big thing that I love about Logic is the dry wet. It literally allows you to do parallel processing where you have, I can blend percentage. It's almost like you have a mix button on uh, a unit. So some hardware units have that, like my API have a, a mix parallel processing. But for example, my saturation unit or my uh, SSL fusion doesn't have that. So if I want to have a mix button, I won't be able to. So this allows you to do this as well as allows you to do mid side, which is really cool because now any stereo unit that I have in the studio, I can turn it from stereo to mid side, which at this point, channel 13 would be the mid and channel 14 would be the side, which is really cool. But it's, it's very, very simple. I put that in here. Now that IO right there is in that corner is treat it as a plugin. So it's gonna work in your plugin chain, and then it would basically, as it's in your plugin chain, it's depending on the order of where it's at. Like right now I have that EQ first and then this. You can have that first or the EQ or another compressor, whatever it is, and then you can uh, just stack them as much as you want. You can, uh, right now I'm processing the piano, but you can also grab that IO, put it on the main master, and then you can process the whole mix bus or the whole master bus. Now, one thing I don't like about Logic in terms of how they run their IOs is I can't rename that specific IO plugin to what I want it to be. So it it's basically, unless there's somewhere I'm not familiar with, it basically just shows, you guys can see here, it just shows as IO. So as you can see, it just says IO in, like I know right now this is my API 2500, but if I have, 10 or 15 of those in my session, it gets a little confusing which is which. Um, so anyways, that's what I don't like about it. Obviously you can use an IO in multiple places after you commit it. So which means I can use like an API 2500 right here on my piano and then I would bounce that track and then bring the bounce back into the session, just commit it. And then I would use it somewhere else. Uh, that's how you would use the IO multiple or the insert multiple times in multiple places. Anyways, I hope this video is helpful um, to explain how to use hardware inserts with your unit using a Galaxy or any of the Antelope interfaces. 
and using logic. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. But if you also want more professional setup for your studio or you don't know how to set up your IOs, uh, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one Zoom consulting where I can access your computer remote. So shoot me an email. My email is in the description below, fady at hobbyproductions.org, and I will be happy to set up a consult with you and help your setup. If this was a helpful video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.